YouTube. We're gonna open a box right now. It's gonna be amazing. So some of you hey, may be aware, we're going to be gone soon. And so if you see a gap in our production, that means somebody forgot to click some buttons before we left for our trip. We're already gone. We're already gone when you're seeing we're this, people. Back. We're already back. It's gonna be fantastic. So if we saw you at Bigfoot, which I did see a footage of Bigfoot in like Colorado or something too, but this is, this is the real Bigfoot, the event, the amazing event. And we're gonna be there in Birmingham. So hopefully we saw you there and hopefully all went to plan. Uh, this is something new and exciting. And I, is this box like unmarked? Box might not look like this, our, your box will probably not look like this. Evidently there was a shipping faux pas. That's, I'm gonna say it that way. Somebody accidentally threw the box away at the factory. Yeah. Oh my goodness, look at this Tower Hobbies Seawind 1.4 PNP, amazing. Now you may notice that this has a, uh, an interesting shell on the bottom. We're gonna see how this works out because to be honest with you, we do not have a pond yet, but we're working on it. So hopefully, hopefully we'll be doing landing gear process. Okay, so this is from Tower. It's not brand new, but it's being re-released after many, many years of sabbatical. I don't know why, but maybe we'll find out. So we're going we're gonna to review this thing today, and uh, hopefully it's amazing. And uh, we've had pretty good luck that the last Tower product we did was awesome, and that was the ASW28, and really enjoyed it. I'm kind of a sucker for AS28s from everybody we've done them for, but that one was extra good because it just came out and worked really nicely. Okay, so we have a horizontal stabilizer. Looks like some embedded hinges here. A uh, little bit of reinforcement, kind of sloppy paint around the edge here, but no big deal. Got a control linkage. That's already installed. Yeah, but I'm wondering if maybe it won't be on theirs. You gotta mm. keep in mind, this one is a sample. So guys, sometimes when we get samples, there's minor deviations on exactly what you get. Usually they're very, very close. Okay, so Tower Hobbies, branded instruction manual. Looks like this instruction manual is, I don't know if they've updated it or not. We'll see real quick here. Oh, and it comes with some stickers, pretty cool. Oh, they got end numbers. Okay, so the instruction manual. Images with the manual. Okay, so yeah, so there's some instructions. Now, keep in mind the landing gear are gonna be kind of interesting on this, but I do not know, does this thing actually run on water? I don't know, we'll find out. So we got some Tower Hobby stickers and some N numbers. Yes, that's right. We are going to be literally, hopefully when you guys are seeing this, probably getting equipment delivered. We had some delays, evidently our Dirt worker had his bucket in for repair on his excavator and then the guy that was repairing his bucket, his kid got cancer, which is terrible. So there was a delay. It's crazy the weird things that delay projects like cancer, and things yeah. like that, because you care about your family and you want to go to get treatment. So thoughts and prayers with people like that that are going through tough times. So hopefully our little menial project will not be uh, causing any sort of problems there. Okay, this is a different looking fuse than I've ever seen. This is something else, goodness gracious. That is so weird really and weird. also awesome. Look at that, feel that. It's like a hole. It's a hole, it's a hole, a it's hole. a hole. A hole. And then we have this weird landing gear design that comes out the side, but oh my goodness, look at the cockpit. There's like seats strewn around. Did somebody crash this? in the ocean. I think that might actually be by design right now because those seats, that is like super detailed. There's even yokes, guys. That is so cool. So anyway, I'm kind of a sucker for seaplanes, uh, but I'm gonna be a bigger sucker for seaplanes here shortly. Oh, and by the way, yes, this is a water rudder. It looks like that is a real live rudder that is attached to the rudder. And that's gonna be pretty sweet because I'm assuming there'll be thrust that's blown across this. Um, okay, just kind of a weird unbox. Yes, I know you're nervous about it. I am too. Um, as you can see, it's just sort of a weird unboxing because everything is down here in the bottom. What the heck is this? We have like a bottle in here. 
I don't understand. There's definitely going to be some weirdness about this project here, hon. And I'm, yeah, there's literally a bottle. What the heck is that for? Is that to like drain fluid out of it? If it gets like a little bit, is this, you can like, what, what do they call that when you take water out of a boat? That's gotta be, that can't be. What is this thing? Why the heck is that in there? I don't understand. Well, we're gonna understand here shortly, I'm sure. Um, and then we have another piece here. This is why we do unboxings, guys, because sometimes there's weird stuff in here. Sometimes there's not. Okay, that is gonna go, I don't know where that goes. It must be like the top of the tail assembly. Yes, look at the drawing. Yes, this goes on top. So this is gonna go on top of the thing, and then this is gonna go on top of that thing somehow. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Okay. This is definitely a different build. And by the way, before I get any further, I'm gonna grab a plane stand because a plane stand is probably gonna help me feel more comfortable with just negotiating this thing around because there's a lot of weird parts here. Normally we don't go straight onto the plane stand, but I think we're gonna do it today just because I don't wanna have this thing fall. It looks totally cool. It's kind of heavy though. I'm not sure how that's gonna go, but it's a boat. So it has like a hard hole on the bottom. Um, and we've never seen that before. There's a box in the middle. I don't know what this is. Looks like a box of some sort of an accessory pack. Sorry, camera crew. Oh, it's the landing gear. Okay. So we have some landing gear, looks like squishy. And then we have some spring loaded things. So that'll help when they splay out. But then I'm just like not sure how all this is gonna work. But my assumption is these are gonna screw in there and then this is gonna go like that. But then hold on a second. Oh, so you gotta take that off? I'm not sure how is this gonna work. Are those just gonna pull up on the side like this under the wing? Oh, they're gonna go in the wing. There's gonna be a, a cavity in the wing. Okay, so again, like I'm not familiar with the Sea Wind. I've seen, I've seen them before in real life, this type of plane. It's just a unique thing for us. And so I love unique things, so I'm actually really excited for it because it seems like a lot of what we do on this channel ends up being, you know, warbirds that we've done before, or timbers. Sorry, that was a cheap shot. I'm just joking, I love timbers, they're always good. Yep. So, and timbers, as you know, are also seaplanes. planes. No, I, you don't have to rip this open, but mine was glued to the end a little bit. Okay, so we have a Y cable and some Velcro and a few screws. Camera crew, throw me that foam over there. Yep. Oh, buddy. Look at that pair. Oh. <sighs> Better watch out. They're kind of small. They are a little bit, a little bit small. Oh, that's right. My camera crew is sick right now with a cold. And so, uh, yeah, she's not mic'd up. I'm trying to figure out the best way to pull these wings out. You see how they're in there? Oh. It's just kind of like an unusual packaging. I know there's one other merchant that liked to package this way and I am not a big fan of this. Do you need to open the other, does the other side open? Actually, you know what? You know what, that, I'm surprised I didn't think of that because. No, flip it all the way over. Well, what I'm saying is I don't, I can't pull this out here. I was hoping I could open that because I want to get the carbon fiber strut out too. Um, no. Oh, you mean just, you know, it just opens on the top. Okay. Yeah, it's glued, it's glued, this is glued down on the back. So it's like these weird boxes, like you have to kind of know how to take stuff out. I'm just like nervous I'm gonna break something because these winglets go up in there. I feel like this will get out of the way, but I'm quite concerned about it. Like I feel like I'm really putting a lot of pressure on this for some yeah, reason. It looks like it. Yeah, I don't like that feeling. And the reason why is because there's a linkage rod that comes out for, looks like the flap. And so I'm just gonna open this up right now. So guys, here on Brian Phillips RC, we like to unbox things, build, and then radio set up the planes. In this case, the unbox is probably gonna be a little bit more telling than what we're used to, because normally like the packaging on Horizon stuff is just like second to none, not weird kind of at all. Same. Okay, so we have inboard flaps, and they are a Fowler flap, it looks like. And then the aileron is also, this is so strange, because it's got the canoe built into the wingtip, and kind of a, a different looking mechanism here. Looks like that's got an embedded servo a little nervous that that's been pulled down, but no big deal. Yeah, it's like a Fowler aileron too. You see this? That is totally a Fowler aileron. That is so cool. So it's got that slotted end on it. 
Nice smooth finish. Feels very robust and as you can see, LEDs. LEDs. So that's pretty sweet. I hope they're bright though. So we'll find out on that. It looks like this is a couple of servos. Ooh, I hope that is not going to damage the, f okay, good, it didn't. So I'm just taking that off. That was just to hold the linkages. What are those? That's just the flaps control. Oh. Yeah, totally weird, right? We haven't seen, and honestly, I think this is a re-release, so there's gonna be some things in here that we're not used to having, but you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna pair this plane up with the latest and greatest technology. We were kind of toying with the concept of just doing a 620, because I think that's what Horizon was gonna recommend, but I'm gonna just go straight to the 631 and skip all the middle steps. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do a 637T, because I don't think we need anything too fantastic, but we still have AS3X and safe here. Now you may not need AS3X and safe, if you wanna just do this, you'll save quite a few bucks, but I'm gonna do it. And by the way, if you don't need the stabilization, you can follow along in the radio setup exactly the same. You'll just skip the very last part where we go in and set up AS3X and then subsequently safe, which is part of forward programming. So if you do the 620, you can just skip that part. Uh, but the beauty of it is you'll be able to follow along the video exactly the same. We're gonna use the NX10. You don't need the 10 channels for this plane, but 10 channels are always better than eight. Unless of course you don't need them. Now, these blocks are terrible though. I don't know what the deal is. It's that linkage that's going in there. And I'm just trying not to damage it. It's like, feels like you're gonna damage it. No, not gonna damage it. Okay, so we've got it out. There's still more stuff in there. Don't let me get excited and throw away the box. It's just an unusual unbox. You were gonna throw something away? What? You were gonna throw something away? And don't forget they can't hear you. I'm close to you. The camera crew was making a snide remark oh, as you usual. Can, yell at your can you please hold that end? Mm -hmm. um, this packing is just weird. I'm not used to it. And Tower does different, different packaging techniques, especially on these uh, planes that were designed a while back. I think it's a really cool looking shape though. I'm really excited to see it. And I love the wing design, it's so cool. Especially this thing. I just hope it's strong enough to deploy the flap. Now this servo looks to be probably a nine gram servo, but I honestly cannot tell. And it seems pretty good. But then we have this nice LED package here on the wing tip. So that's pretty sweet. And there is two LEDs, it looks like. So one's gonna be red on this side. And then of course we have these taped down into the wheel hubs or the wheel wells rather, not wheel hubs, I don't know why I said that. And they are labeled. So, so far so good. I mean, all the pieces are coming out of the box and there's not very many pieces, which is for us a good thing. We do not like high piece count planes. Um, if we could avoid having high piece counts, it makes our life so much easier because we have so many planes. Okay, big thick carbon fiber spar. Look at the wall thickness on that. This thing's like crazy strong. You can definitely tell it's carbon fiber when it sounds like that. It sounds like you dropped a piece of steel. It's not gonna sound like that if it's, if it's just fiberglass, it'll sound more uh, like a thud. Okay, and then we have a prop here. Looks like a pretty prop. Push your prop style. This is a 12 by six, okay? And that is going to go, no, it's not a pusher, it's a tractor still. And then they gave us two spinners. That's so weird, why would they give us two spinners? That's a big prop. Is it? Yeah, it kind of is a big prop. I wonder if they're gonna turn it slower. That, that motor design is so different. If you look inside the cow there, I don't know if it's accessible though, it's pretty hard to get in there. Is it screwed on? Yeah, it's screwed on. There's a screw right there. Go from the front so they can see. Oh, yep. See, show them the screws. And then these are gonna have to go on there. Oh, there's a nut. Look, there's like a pass-through on this thing. See? And then there, you'll pass through, and then this will adapt on once you've got it set, and then this will go just like that. Hmm. So it looks pretty sweet. Okay, yeah. nice. Well, I, I was like, why are there two though? I was yeah. like, this isn't a twin engine plane, but 
I guess we'll find out here pretty quick. So unbox, uh, I don't want to say it was uneventful. It's probably the most eventful unboxing we've had in a while. Uh, but what we're going to do is, and if I didn't already mention this, a 1.4 meter wingspan, but I got to say it's just such a different shape plane that it's something that we have not seen before. And so we're quite excited for it. Now, the other thing too is I'm not 100% sure with the way the landing gear is set up on the nose gear, is this actually a seaplane? Well, I mean, it's got a rudder. You'd have to assume it's gotta be a seaplane. Um, or is it just designed to just kind of look the part? And that's what we're gonna find out. In fact, I might take a second clean up and we'll come right back. All right, so we're supposed to put the landing gear on first, right? Yes. Okay, this is where you look, right there. See it? It says R. Your fingers in There you go. It says R. And then this one says, L, which looks ambiguously like <laughs> something <Seven>. else. <laughs> so these are gonna go on this little pivot down here. So there's a flat and then a rounded portion. You wanna put it on the pivot, okay? So it's gonna go like that. So this is the left side. And you can sort of tell also because this is gonna scoop up like it's the bottom of the plane, okay? Because this is scooped toward the front, okay? So these are the screws. Now, it said to take them out, but ours were not in to begin with. Correct. So we're just looking through, and unfortunately for us, they're super similar in length. And so what we have to do is we have to figure out which one's which. And my understanding with this is that we're probably going to be all the same. There's one big one, and then one slightly smaller one and then it looks like a total of one two three four five six smaller smallers so the wings are going to be held on by this little clip mechanism right this little clip mechanism right this little clip mechanism here that turns sideways and i'm desperately trying not to knock something off here so you're going to loosen that with a screwdriver and then it's going to twist this is actually the mechanism that runs the retract, okay? In fact, I need to reassociate this to a better angle because this has a little bit of top heaviness to it. So those things have to be adjusted occasionally. Okay, good. All right, so this is a Phillips bit. So we're gonna go to the Chinese number four millimeter and see if that works, that does work. See how that turns? That worked pretty good actually. <laughs> Excuse me. And then we do have to get these mounted first. So I'm just trying to get an idea for how it goes. So this is definitely the left one. All right. But my problem is what size are we going with? I think we're going with the smallest ones, yeah, right? So. It says 10 millimeter. 10 millimeters. Okay. We could measure or we could just go with it. I think I'm going to just go with it. How about that? Yeah. But then shouldn't there be, do you use the same one to go through this, the clevis? I don't know. Or whatever that thing is. I'm gonna go like that. How about that? Ah. I remember putting these on the timber for the first time and they had those pivots. I doubt you're gonna be able to see from that angle. I, this does not feel like it's the right size. I'm gonna have to sit guys, sorry. Try not to sit while we're filming because I feel like I'm being lazy. Uh, okay. It's just kind of an awkward angle, that's all. It's not particularly hard stuff. Uh, see, I don't have the angles lined up, so I can't get the threads to purchase. Ah! All right, we're gonna try making it flat. Let's see if that works. You guys see what I'm doing now? Oh, there she goes, finally. Okay, no big deal then. Now that's metal on metal, so you could technically use Loctite if you wanted, but they didn't say anything about that no. in the manual. Okay. Because this is, uh, after all, a true sailplane and a wheels up, wheels down kind of plane, which is pretty sweet and amazing. This would be such a cool plane to do a review on and then like have it be our first sailplane. Although we're probably gonna be a little bit before we have our, our pond done. And guys, we've done uh, float planes before because we used to have three ponds in our neighborhood where we lived. And uh, this is back, you know, and we don't talk about this much because we don't want to like get ourselves in trouble. But back in the day, when we first started flying there, it was actually fully not illegal right. or, or unethical. 
and we had good relationships with our neighbors and, and now it's maybe not so much, but uh, thank goodness we're not actually filming there anymore. Right. So after the neighbors started to turn around and uh, move to different neighborhoods and stuff over time, it got to be in where we didn't have quite such a tight relationship with all the new people. It's not like we didn't go along, we got along great, but um, we didn't have that bond. So it was kind of like we lost that access that we enjoyed. Okay, so there's that. That, that is totally sweet. I just wish there was some decals here because then it would carry this line on. I'm really curious how well it's gonna work. It makes me think it's probably gonna be a little on the weak side, but let's find out. Only time will tell, folks. It's not very many pieces, though. That's one thing I'm very excited about. Mm -hmm. This might be kind of hard. Can you move those wings for me since you're up? Thank you. All right, so now the other side, same exact process. The only difference is now, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm having to kind of walk this into the correct position. And it's, it's weird because like it feels freed up, like it's got a thread that's biting somewhere, but we didn't have to build this assembly. So it's a pretty cool looking assembly. I like these type of things. Um, it just makes me think if you don't have a good landing, it could be potentially maybe not great. Um, also, I was just looking inside that canopy and those chairs being off of the bottom just weird me out. I really think it's sweet that we have those chairs. I'm just hoping it's not something we have to put on top of the battery because that'd be a pain. I am a sucker for scale stuff though. So, I mean, honestly, that's like what gets me going. Oh, really? Yes. Yes, it is. If you didn't already know that camera crew. <laughs> All right, so I would say these Phillips screws are biting really nicely. We have had some Phillips screws in the past where they just like don't give us the torque we need to get things tightened together nicely. This one's not giving me any problems. Now the other thing is I liked passing the screw from the back to the front because the nature of the shape gives me more room for the screwdriver. So I'm gonna spin this around like that. Oh yeah, that's the way I'm gonna do it. And that gives us our last screw of this size. So hopefully we don't need any more screws of yeah, that okay. size. Yeah. Well, I mean, you couldn't have done the other two because they wouldn't have. No. You wouldn't have had near enough. So, ah, dang it. Um, I think you've managed to be on the wrong side both of these, no, I right? Can, see. can you really? Mm -hmm. Is my hand blocking? Some of these steps, folks, we try our very best to um, film, but then I have to actually build it too. So. All right, now don't over tighten this because it's gonna make a bind, an unnecessary bind on there, which I'm not a big fan of doing this, but oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's moving free. I gotta back it off like a little bit of a turn, like a half a turn probably. All right, so this is the screws that's left right here. So we got a longer screw. One of them's gonna be for the prop. And then I don't know what the other one's for. I, can't, I haven't figured it out yet. Horizontal. Probably for the horizontal stabilizer up on top. Okay, why don't we do that next actually? <laughs> So they said, don't land the set screw on the elevator, right? Correct. Okay. You put it through the hole, but don't tighten it yet. They didn't hear me, so. So this is what they're talking about right here, guys. This set. Yep. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna try to do this right. There's a clip here. The clip goes into that little piece of whatever it is, doohickey. Okay, did they say what experience level this was or do they do that with tower? I don't know. I don't think they really did, but my guess is folks, with this plane, just there seems to be some like pretty delicate parts. And I gotta be honest with you, a lot of our experience in the hobby would have, it would have post dated this plane. Meaning we were not around when this one came out, I don't think, were we? Probably not. Or we weren't working with Tower for sure. I know that because we weren't working with anybody at that time. Right. So our history was, uh oh, what did I do with the screws? <laughs> oh, they're right here. Whew, that was close. Do so there's a small one and a big one. I think that what we need to do to figure out which one's which is figure out which one goes in here. Okay, so this one's obviously going to be for the elevator. Okay, which was for that the, the bigger one or the. Ooh. 
Um, yeah, that's probably not it. And you know what? I don't think I did that right. I think it needs to slip in there. Because you see how there's like rails exposed? I don't think I did it right. No, no, it's not rails. See, this is just smooth sided. This is the only thing that clips into the rail. Okay. By the way, there are some pictures, but you know, they're kind of like, yeah, maybe sort of helpful suggestions. But this is, this video is gonna hopefully help you figure it out. I don't really think it's, oh, that comes from the bottom. What the heck? That is weird. That is very weird. Does it go up into the rudder yes. then too? I don't know. No, there's a nylock. Or there's, yep, look, from the top, she's going through. Yeah, that's a nut. That's, that's an embedded nut. That's actually a nylock that's like glued into the foam. Do you see that? Yeah. Weird. Okay, then this has no attachment point. It just slides in, oh, okay? okay? So we don't need to worry about that. We'll go ahead and tighten this all the way down. Guys, do not leave this loose. You do not want slop on this. That would be not good, folks. Okay, so also don't be freaked out if you look down and you see broken foam here, because that's the way that it will eventually break anyway. There are embedded hinges. Okay, folks, that's not just a pinch hinge, it's an embedded hinge. All right, then the vertical stabilizer continues at the top and it's a press fit. Okay, looks sweet. Okay. This has been like one of the easiest builds ever um, so far. It's a little bit weird, but I mean, it's been very easy. Yeah. In un unlike normal fashion for Brian Phillips RC, we're gonna wait to put the prop on. Um, we occasionally get grief from some of you guys that are really like safety prudish. I'm pretty much a safety prude. You just don't know that from watching our videos. Um, because this is right here, it's just different enough that I don't want to risk it for the biscuit. Okay, so we've got two wires. One is the lighting, it says L2, and then one is clearly the aileron, and then of course the linkage is a mechanical linkage for the flap. So in order to install this, I think I'm gonna turn this sideways. I'm going to pass the rod through the hole. Okay, it's a very important step. You always got to try to slide it through. Oh boy. There's the hole. Nice. Guys, I got to say, um, I, I don't know how the canopy opens. I want to find out. Does it just pop? Oh yeah. What the heck am I doing wrong? Oh, Whoa, nice. that is so cool. And yet there's... Like that is really weird and super cool. Okay, what the heck is going on with these chairs? Oh, they're magnetic. They're magnetic. Oh, I dropped my passenger's chairs. Look. That is weird. That is so weird. So where the heck is the battery gonna go? Okay, that, I've never seen anything quite like that. That's pretty sweet. And I know I'm kind of aging myself here because, are you kidding me? Oh, that's not the ESC. Thank goodness. What is going on back there? Look at that. Ooh, what is that? That's the servo that runs the landing gear. Yeah. So this is a gear sequencer. Bizarre. Gear out, gear out two. Okay. okay, then this says gear. So that goes back to the gear servo. And then this is the light controller. So L2, L1. So that's a tower light controller. Okay, so we're just gonna steal power at some point, and then we have a flat plug. So it looks like, I don't know if they, uh, if they just, yeah, they're just stealing power for the flaps, uh, from the flap circuit for the lights, okay? Which by the way, it's all coming from the same BEC, battery eliminator circuit. If you guys are new to the uh, show, the battery eliminator circuit is where all of the other devices go. So this is the rudder. Not a big fan of where all the wires are though, because by the time you put your battery in there, the battery's supposed to go right here. And it's like, there's yokes. What is this? This is the ESC. Oh, the ESC is like glued down in there. Okay, then we have a plug. Oh, good. It's actually got, thanks for turning the light on. That's handy. Oh, there's a bunch of crap in there. That's paint. Ooh. Watch your eyes. <sighs> that is like so weird. I've never seen them do that before in any airplane that we've ever worked on. 
but it feels like this side is better supported than this. So I'm just kind of curious if I'm, oh, there's a lock. Do you see that? Once you get to a certain height, it locks it. That is so cool. Okay, I want to see all this stuff though. I don't want to see none of it. Because how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this, camera crew? I don't know. I don't think you're ready for this. That's the flap servo. Yeah, but we got to make sure those go underneath so they're on that battery tray area. Is that where your receiver's going to go? Is on that tray? I guess. You're right. Then it can just chase to that spot. Then you tuck everything underneath and put the seat back in? Yeah. I don't have a lot of experience with tucking, so... Which is probably good for First you. <laughs> okay, so this is the ESC lead. So I guess we're going to, I'm trying to decide. I think I want to just, the cable management is sort of happening here. Just like all of a sudden, I didn't really mean for it to happen this way. It looks like it's going to be terrible to get the battery in though. Look at this. Because yeah. it's 2200 3S is what they're calling out. And it's not got an overly long lead. Okay, folks. So it does have a strap that's like the super light duty style. And I actually don't have a problem with the light duty style. The only thing I do have a problem with is that it's glued in, which means you're not gonna be able to shift it. And my hands are probably blocking everything. Yeah. So I am super sorry about that. But you see, I've got a nice loop there. Okay. Um, okay, so I love the instrument panel. I kind of wish this bump wasn't a bump because <laughs> that bump is not very pretty. Now, is this glued? Yes, it is. So I guess we're gonna have to take their word for it on the nose gear, okay? So let's see, this is definitely gonna drop back in there. This is definitely gonna be available to go in the front, but I am not gonna probably, what is that? It's, is that steel or magnets? It's almost like it is a magnet, but it's like, it's just a very, very light. Oh, that's steel. That's steel. The magnets are down below, I think. Okay. But there's like these channels here. You see the channels? <sighs> okay, so we still don't know what the heck this thing is. Uh, no, and I don't through the whole instruction manual. Is it like to drain the landing gear? Because it looks like they made a pocket in here to like collect water maybe. That's got to be what it is. It's so you can take water out because this isn't even cut. So you can cut that and then you can suck water out. I have no idea, guys. It's very weird. Um, obviously, there's no fuel going in here because right. it's electric. All right, one of the more confused Brian Phillips RC videos than you've seen in recent history, but truth is we're all about doing new things, even if new things are old things. <clears throat> right? Right. All right, so we're going to try to pass this through. Wait, it's got to go through that little hole. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I'm going to put your rod in first. Listen. I got the rod part under control. Okay. Here, reach in there and grab it. Thank you. Yeah. Now, the other thing we could do is we could stick those together if we needed to. Can you grab the other one? Yep, I got them both. Okay, now I'm gonna push the rod back through. The second side's gonna be, ooh, it's gonna be fun. How the heck am I gonna slide that in and clip it? Okay, yeah. I, gotta, I gotta turn this. Okay. Cause doesn't that have to pivot in there? Yeah, so put the back side down. Oh, like this yeah. and then up. And then okay, so this clips down, this clips up. Yeah. Gotcha. And then you got okay, to pull, pull, my, pull my wires. Okay. And pull them all the way up. Okay, so now I just need to guide the rod into the hole. Yep. And there's just like a, so lot, a lot of, of holes. precision. This thing must have been terribly difficult to design. Good lordy lord lord. Now down and then up. Oh, yeah. wow. That was so smooth. That was like butter smooth. Wow. That is so cool. Man, they put a ton of engineering into this. This is like crazy. Yeah, that just locked it. But I feel like I, I wonder if I can turn the other way so it's tightening. Did it go? No. No, it unlocked. You have to, you have to loosen the screw to tighten it on. That's kind of disconcerting. Wait, it's not, shouldn't it twist so it's It was, like, wasn't it twisted? Yeah. Here, hold on. Person. What were you looking at down there? There you go. That's what I was expecting. Now okay, so now I'm tightening it. 90 degrees. Yeah, it's 90 degrees, but now I'm tightening the screw so it can't loosen. Okay. As easy, okay? Now, I need to probably turn this. 
I mean, it, I feel like I'm building a real plane. This is uh, this is pretty cool. We would do a lot of builds here, guys. We have like 40 planes in this living room. Um, but this one just feels different. It's strange. Okay. But I'm actually really enjoying it. I think it's cool. This is going to be a cool plane. It is. It's totally different than what we're used to, which just makes me like it all the more. Do you want me around so I can help you pull your wire through? Um, since I'm not balancing it now, it might be a little easier on me, so probably not okay. yet. I just need to make sure that I don't push the plane off the plane stand. Um, but like, honestly, this is not too bad to put together because there's going to be some poor sucker that has to take this apart to transport it. Ugh, that'd be that would be terrible. There's a lot of things that are going to have to be undone. I think you just need a bigger car. Yeah, that would be a good point. Okay. So I am now pushing the rod. So I need, I need you to go around the other side. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to hold here on the fuse on the bottom side and just give me something to push against. Okay. I'm going to try to have as many, there we go. Cause I'm pushing the rod now. That's why I'm having trouble. Yeah. All right. So now this, this says L1 and it says aileron. So the ailerons are going to go to a Y cable. Unless of course you were going to do like a full length flap, which would be goofy guys. You don't need that on this plane. The inboard flap I'm sure is fine. I like inboard flaps and uh, I don't want to overcomplicate the radio setup for no reason. Um, maybe if we fly it and there's some reason why we would want to do it, then we'll go ahead and switch gears. But for now, I'm just going to plan on doing the inboard flap. Seems like a pretty well-designed plane so far. It's got a lot of complexity though. Do you guys know what the enemy of reliability typically is? Complexity. Yes. If you've never heard that before, you've never worked with an engineer. <laughs> an engineer. Yes. An engineer one of them no i'm loosening this screw until it twists you know what i think you can actually use a flat bladed screwdriver to turn that but i'm going to just get it and then tighten the screw from the top okay so that's going to lock the wings in that was actually not too bad i was nervous about it because just looking at the way it unboxed yeah. i'm like good lord this is gonna be weird um okay so now i'm sort of like super excited to see the gear work too so I'm trying to decide, do I want to like have this back? See, now I've got a tail wheel. I, I got to watch out for the tail. You guys see what I'm looking at here? I need room for this to open. Okay. But then I also want to watch out for the water rudder. Oh, it's, I've got a little bit of room. I got real estate. All right. So as far as I'm concerned, that's, that should be safe for functioning all of it. Because remember the first time you energize this system, the gear might flop opened. I kind of doubt it with the way this thing is. It's got a sequencer involved, but you never know. And so you got to be careful and, and anticipate that as a potential conflict. There's something in there about like where the, the flap linkage has to go somewhere. Do we need to do that before we get too excited about? There's an arrow and Chinese letters. Oh. Can you read the Chinese letter yeah. to me, please? Uh, it says that way. What does that mean? Well, there's only one servo, which means that there's a bell housing on one side that converts the, the lateral movement to the same deployment of the flap. See, I can move the flap and that moves the servo or that moves where it is. Okay. Wait, do we have to put it in the hole there? Of course you do eventually. Okay. But for now, we need to probably energize it so it can center. Now, okay. this would be a good time to talk about one detail. If you don't already have an XPC battery checker, and no, I'm not just trying to sell you stuff. At the same time, if you decide to buy this, you'll be helping to support Brian Phillips RC. These things go for about 50-ish bucks. You want one. It is a battery checker, and it's gonna work as a servo tester. But you don't have to have it. You can just use your radio if you want, okay? So I'm just saying, if you wanna do this, remember, you don't need to have a smart battery to make it work. But if you have a smart battery, then this can also program uh, the settings in your battery, which is kind of nice. Okay. So as you can see, this one's somewhat discharged. All right. I thought I charged that the other day, huh? Didn't I? Okay. So we have a 3000. Uh, let's see what this one's. No, that one's still charging. Why? It says hundred percent, but yet it's at one amp. Why the heck is it at one amp? If it's at hundred percent, what's going on in here? Look, we're balanced. See that? Oh, it must be just ramping down. 
Okay, on this one, see we're at 100% and it's dropped down. Okay, so we'll grab this battery. Okay, so 3S 2200, which is like probably one of the smallest batteries we've used for a plane in a long time. Yeah. Especially a plane of this size, yeah. it does definitely leave me a little bit concerned because uh, that's, that's a lot of plane. That's a lot of plane. That's, that's a lot of plane for a 3S. Um, so we'll see how that works. I am actually quite interested to see how all this is gonna wake up. These are Tower Hobby Servo, 17 gram servo metal gear for the rudder, water rudder and nose gear steerable. And then it looks like these are uh, nine gram sub micro. Uh, I'm not gonna read the model number. I can't tell there, I believe they're metal gear though. But yeah, this definitely reminds me of the stuff that my grandpa would have used uh, back when we worked together on planes because he had a lot of tower stuff. Mm -hmm. So really cool and beautiful looking plane. So I think our next move kind of needs to be radio setup. We're already there. Yeah, I, think so. I mean, I don't know what else we would do because we kind of need to center a bunch of stuff. We can't install the flap. We can't install the elevator linkage. I don't want the prop on yet, mm -hmm. which means we can't install the spinner, which there's two of. So we got a spare spinner, so that's always nice. Okay. Maybe we can put that over here next to our luggage and our uh, giant sump thing, whatever it is. Did you hear what I called it? Yeah. A sump thing? Yeah. I, it was a terrible dad. I thought it was pretty dang good. Well thought of ahead of time. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't think of it ahead of time. Uh -oh. Whoops. Screw Right behind your foot, you slipped over. Yes, guys, I really do drop things this much in real life. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna leave that right uh, on, the, on, the on the thing. You know the thing right okay. there. Okay, so they gave us some like Velcro as well. You know how I feel about Velcro. But, okay, this is going to be one of those occasions where it might just make sense to just like grin and bear and put Velcro on. Oh! Oh, oh, those are 4S 2200s from the F14. I use Velcro on those too. You're not really Velcro on, are you? Well, I usually do shelf liner. The problem is this is going to be very difficult to use. It's going to be awkward. Like it's going to be terrible. If it slipped, maybe it'd be okay. Oh yes, it does slip. I had to break free a little teeny bit of glue and now it's slipping. Oh, thank good. Oh, that's what I was afraid of. See, I pulled it out. Son of a biscuit lover. Well, that's okay. It's at least down in the trap. There's three quarters of the glue is still there. If you guys have ever done that, don't feel bad. I do it like every time that there is a glued down Velcro. Yeah. All right. Okay, so this is what we're using. 631, guys. We're gonna peel this back. Sorry guys, had a couple of sneeze, sneezles. All right, so here's what's gonna happen, folks. We are going to use the 631, which is gonna give us AS3X and safe. Not that you would have to use an AR631. You could use the 637T, which would give you more telemetry, and that telemetry data might come in handy. Also, I'm just gonna say it this way. I don't think that's an Avian ESC, but having thrust reverse would be really, really nice in a C plane, okay? So I'm not sure if Tower was thinking about that, but if you're thinking about it, then I would suggest you consider an Avian, okay? And the money that you would otherwise have spent on the 637T, jump into the 631, save a few bucks there, apply to the Avian. If you decide to get that full feature, you will not regret it. But I'm not gonna put it on this one just to show you how it works. Um, but if you ever do decide to do it, the cool thing is, when you have the lesser expensive receiver, since it's still smart, you can still activate and control the thrust reverse on the avians through this feature, okay? So, all right, the way we do radio setup is pretty basic stuff. This is, this is a basic um, five channel plane. It just has a little bit more sophisticated landing gear. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel them back and go to add new model. We have to build a profile first. 
Okay, so we're gonna create. So I hit back and cancel and then I just went add new. Now this takes a long time because I have a lot of models in here. And then this is gonna help us to figure out where to land each of the necessary wires. And if you're curious, they've silk screened here S plus and minus. So the minus is down and the signal is up. You can see if you kind of zoom in there. All right, there it is. All right. So then of course the bind button is here, but you can also plug in a bind button or if you need to program, you can use that port to program. All right, so now that that's done, we can go to the model type. That's the acro. If you change that, it'll reset everything. Then we're gonna type in a model name. So this is where we'll scroll. I use the legacy keyboard, FYI. We'll be right back when we're done typing. All right, so we put Seawind Tower uh, because it's Tower Hobbies, but I always have trouble finding stuff if I'm looking for the word second. So anyway, 1.4 meter. Aircraft type, this is where you're gonna set a single flap and a single aileron. And then this is just a standard tail type, even though it's a T tail. Okay. And then I'm gonna select an image, standard image. Let's see if we got one that's like a float plane-esque. Probably that carbon cub. Yeah, it looks like we'll be best like the carbon cub on floats. And then flight mode setup. Now, just to be clear, if you're using the 631 or 637T, which is gonna have safe and AS3X, then you'll wanna do this. You wouldn't absolutely have to do this step if you're doing a 620, which is not gonna have AS3X and safe, but for us, we are. So in that case, we gotta talk about switches. This is gonna be my flaps. This is gonna be my gear, which are our retracts. And then this is gonna be nothing. And then this is gonna be my mode. Um, so in this case, that's where we're gonna set it. So we're gonna use the D switch for that. Walk out and we'll do spoken. And then there's three of them, okay? So I'm gonna set this. Keep in mind, this is just a label. This is gonna be my AS3X, then it's gonna be off, and then it's gonna be safe, okay? So now I just need to type that in. And so we'll take a second and type. Okay, so we got AS3X typed, and then we're gonna do the spoken mode. And just keep in mind, this is just a label. And I have to stress that because I'm sure that there's somebody that's new to the hobby or returning to the hobby that may get confused thinking this is how you set it. This is just a label. And we will probably have to flip the way that it works as well. And you'll see how far down we scrolled. There's save, we're looking for AS3X, okay? Okay, by the mic. AS3X mode. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll flip the switch and then we can set it to off here. So now we've got off and there is actually a word for off and we're gonna select that for the audio event. And when I say off, I mean stabilizer off. Okay, so we don't want it to just be silent. And then we'll flip this down to flight mode three and we'll do the same thing. We're gonna cancel, cancel, and then we'll type in safe. Okay, so we have safe for sensor, assisted flight envelope. And then we'll scroll down to safe on or something like that. Safe mode. Yeah. Whoa, hold on a sec. Oh, I thought I saw something interesting in there. Smart mode? Hmm, interesting. I never noticed that one before. There's safe mode. Okay, remember, just labels, folks. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to channel sign, we're gonna shut off the attachment for B because we are gonna use that, so I'll just hit cancel to inhibit it. Gear is just gonna stay on switch, on switch A, that's fine. And then I think switch D is going to need to be assigned to something. So aux two is not necessarily flaps because flaps is automatically assigned to aux one. So I might just go ahead now and make my assignment to switch D, mm -hmm. okay? So now you can also, instead of doing switch D, you can go over here and you can do flight mode and it should do the same thing. I'll see if I can find it for you here. It'll do something similar because we've made the attachment, okay? Mm. Now, but just remember, there is a matrix that you can call out where two switches drive the flight mode. 
By the way, I'm noticing this reflection over here. We should, I wonder if we can change our angle slightly. Yes, yes, very good, thank you. So I'm actually gonna just set that back to D, just so you guys know, I wanna use this channel as a way to teach people that are returning to the hobby just all the power you have in these systems, okay? All right, so trim setup, we're not gonna mess with that. But just in case you didn't know, you can make your flight mode have trims for each of the different modes. Now there is a one plane I can think of, it was an Omp Challenger that I used that because there were full length flaperons and it flew weird with the flaps deployed but I was able to do different trims in different settings and it perfected that model. Most models I don't have to do that for. Mm -mm. Um, another example of that would be the F-14 from Horizon, the E-Flight offering and they have a different trim for each of the different settings, okay? Um, just a couple off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Now we can exit here. Okay, then I wanna set up, uh, did they talk about time in the manual while I'm thinking Not about it? I okay, so we'll just, we'll, we'll do our best guess. Do a rate to an expo. Now this is very subjective. I'm gonna show you the way I'm gonna set it up. I'm gonna set it up for five, 10, and 20. Okay, now this is, again, this is going to give us three different levels and they're gonna be attached to switch F. And then I'm gonna do the same exact setting on my elevator. And then also later on, I'm gonna do it for the rudder. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give us basically a starting point. We drop the rates down on the top. So this is our starting point. We can soften the sticks even further or we can make them more sensitive. And the idea is to just get you to the ground or to the water the first time, okay? And so it's a pretty basic setup. We do this all the time, except for in circumstances where you have a plane that has special settings like a VTOL. I know Horizon had a VTOL. I can't remember if that was E-Flight, but it was probably not my favorite one ever. Um, okay, so this is our middle starting point. Now keep in mind, you have other switches, so you could hypothetically change axis of control. I don't recommend it though, and here's why. I use this for thrust reverse, I use this for throttle cut, which we need to set, master gain. I don't really use E ever. I use this for a mode, if I have a retracts and flaps, and then I use this for special settings. So, I kind of already have switches spoken for, right? But don't forget, on these programmable transmitters, you can actually control things with your buttons too, which is weird. Oh, and then we have sliders on the 10. I never use the sliders because I haven't needed them yet. All right, so now throttle cuts. I definitely want that set. That's gonna be a big safety feature. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just move the stick on the throttle and just see that it says minus 100 until such time as I unlock it, and then it moves. So we're good there. Flap system, I'm gonna set that to switch B, but I'm gonna leave it at zero because I don't know what direction that servo is gonna move and I don't want to overdrive any of my servos and I certainly don't wanna set my elevator correction until I have this going, but I am gonna set the speed to two seconds, okay? So at this point, we'll set the timer to, let's just go with five minutes. I guess I don't know if that's, that can't be right, but we'll see. We're going to set the one out active, so anything over 25% on the throttle will start the timer. I'm going to do a voice at one minute, nothing at 20 seconds, and then a voice at 30, or excuse me, a voice at 10 to count down to the expiration, which will be tone and vibrate with a tone every minute thereafter. Walking out of the menu, that brings us down to the next thing would be bind. But we need to go to this screen so we can tell where to plug everything in. Throttle. Aileron, elevator, rudder, gear, flap. Okay, pretty simple stuff. And as you can see, we've got this labeled with a one, two, three, four, five, six. Remember, don't use the first port because that's your bind. Sorry, there you go. So as you can see, we have the six channels. And then down here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, you're like, but wait, didn't you set up flight mode on auxiliary two? Yes, I did. I did. Because the cool thing about this is that you actually get additional channels beyond the pluggables with these, which is really nice. 
So you're actually getting more like an eight channel receiver here. And that's gonna allow me to use master gain for my stabilizer amplitude. And then I can use this for my modes, which is really nice. And that's all inside of this beautiful little package, okay? All right, so the next step is, this is a spatially where receiver. If you were just using an AR620, you could just plop it in there wherever, it'd be no big deal. But in our case, we're gonna have to make a decision on how we want it. Now, I think I want this to drop in here like that. And so really, I don't see any problem with just doing a little double-sided tape, provided my wires are gonna be good. But we are not married to being flat. We could be this way, we could be this way, we could be that way, we could be this way, we could be that way, we could be, there's a bunch of different ways, okay? But now that we know where things are gonna land, we can start landing our cables. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do before I get too far is I wanna get these aileron wires to be man managed well, because there is an aileron wire. You gotta use your Y cable that is provided. So we're gonna grab the first, and of course I'm gonna grab the wrong one every time. Okay, so I'm gonna go brown to brown. Plug that in, brown to brown. Then I'm gonna take my other aileron wire, which is over here, and then brown is down, brown is down. Okay, so there you go. So that's hooked up and ready to go, and then of course our L1 and L2 is just gonna go to the light sequencer controller, which is over here and this is gonna be ready to go down by the flaps too, which is kind of convenient. So now these are color for color, L2, that's L1, so I'll switch to the other one, L2, brown is down. Excuse me, that's L1, goes to L1. And then L2 goes to L2. Now, I don't know why it would matter which one's which, but I know many people have asked me many times, what wire goes where, Brian? There are certain times within the RC applications that it doesn't matter where it goes. Okay, that would seemingly be one, but there is actually a strobe, I think, and a nav light. So we'll find out. Okay. All right, so the next move is, oh, 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 no. This is just power going out. There is no signal lead so this is not being monitored by the signal of the flaps. I was thinking the flaps might activate the lights, which would be rather cool. But just keep in mind, there is, on these, these JR or Futaba ends, we have a ground, we have a power voltage. So this is a circuit. And then we have a signal. Signal is reference to ground not necessarily reference to power because power can be different because some BECs are set to six volts, some are set to 5.5, some are set to five and so on and so forth. So you don't really know, but ground is ground, ground is zero, ground is our reference. All right, so when looking at the receiver, we're gonna start by plugging in throttle. Throttle's pretty easy to see. This is how I do my cable management. The way I do cable management, I have a very simple principle. I plug stuff in and then I figure out how terrible it is. Okay, so there's, how do we know which way this goes? Brown is down, because brown is labeled as a minus, then a plus, which is red, and signal, which is on the top. You can see from the silk screen, like we talked about. Ooh, that's really hard to see in the camera, isn't it? Turn it back away from me. There, you, there go. you go. Okay, so you can see signal is the lighter color. Now, if this was a different type of ESC, you might find that it is white, red, and black. That'd be like, the Futaba color code, as opposed to the JR color code like we're dealing with here. Now, what do we have next? We have rudder, okay? Brown is down on the rudder, and it looks like that's channel four. So I'm just gonna go to the fourth port, and I'm gonna plug it in. It's actually the fifth port, but it's labeled as such, four, okay? Now, as I can tell, I've got a tangle already. I don't like that, but you know what? We may end up twisting this, and it won't be tangled. So we'll find out how bad it really gets. Elevator is on port three. So I'm just untangling as we go as much as possible. And by the way, there are times that you can't untangle these things totally, but it's still nice to get it as clean as possible. Like right now, I'm really hating the way it looks. So I'm just gonna take that out for now and I'm gonna bring it around and plug it back into one. And you're like, but Brian, you didn't change anything. Yes, I did. I went around on top, it was on the bottom before. And if you're saying, it seems the same to me, yes, it is the same. 
I promise. Okay, so this looks bad too, so I'm gonna unplug. Well, except that doesn't wanna come undone, so I'm gonna be a little bit careful. They may have glued it. If they glued it, I'm not probably gonna unplug it. So what that, what I'm talking about is this, straddling that. I don't like that straddling. So I'm gonna see, up oh, there, this one came out easier. So I'll just go under like this. I'll bring that to the inside and then I'm gonna replug. For whatever reason, there's been a number of you that said that you like watching the cable management. I don't understand it, but I'm gonna go with, maybe there's just something about it. Okay, so this is gonna be our gear. And gear are retracts, not the steerable. One, two, three, four, five. So five is gonna be the gear. Okay, so we've got the, uh, and I always find it really weird that the gear always have the smallest, crappiest wires. Right. Why is that? It's, you would think that there'd be like more current there than on anything else. Um, but evidently I am incorrect in my assessment and this needs to go in and around here, sorry. So when I'm all done with these cables, my hope is we can get it tidied up very nicely. Okay, so this is, what is this? This is the ailerons. So the ailerons are straddling. Ooh, did I screw the pooch on this? See this? Eh, I, don't, I don't know that there's, yeah, there is. There is a right and a wrong way. And that might be a little bit over the top, but still, I wanna try to get it as clean as possible because it's gonna be a mess otherwise. All right, so this is the ailerons. Ailerons are on port two. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna lift up and go under. Now guys, if you're brand new to the channel, this is Brian Phillips RC speaking. My wife, the camera crew has a cold, so she's not mic'd up or you would be hearing her snide remarks as usual. So my apologies if you're missing the snide remarks. Don't worry, there's only thousands more videos to watch right now with plenty of snide remarks. We appreciate you being here with us. If you wanna help support us, buy these planes from the links. We make some money on that through commissions, which helps to fund our channel. And if you wanna help us in other ways, we have super thanks, YouTube membership, Patreon, and PayPal. Just remember, if you use PayPal, we're friends and family, because who wants to line the pockets of PayPal? I don't know if anybody does. I don't think so. Maybe Elon. Elon? No, he sold it for that reason. Um, okay, so like Elon was gonna keep it forever, but then they started charging fees and he was like, I'm out of here. I'm gonna go launch rockets to Mars. Hmm. See what happens when banks stop charging fees? You go to Mars? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so it's like when pigs will fly. Yeah. Maybe they'll bring pigs to Mars first. All right, guys, you see this bundle of whatever it is? A bundle. It's quite the bundle. Now this is gonna be spatially aware. So I do need to make some decisions on how this is gonna work, but I'm a little bit reluctant to get too married to one particular position or another. And I'm also thinking about, can this go out the other side? And it's kind of looking like maybe not, because I think it's zip tied here. And that's fine. I think I'm just gonna get some zip ties going. What do you think, camera crew? Because there's just a lot of cable. And folks, normally with zip ties, I found that the best thing to do is less is more, okay? Yeah. You want to use as few as you can use and still accomplish your end game, which is trying to make this thing look nice, function well, and keep the wires from being in a dangerous position. Now, this plane has a lot of moving parts and the moving parts are inevitably going to want to bind up the cables or the cables will want to bind the moving parts. So you'll wanna be mindful about cable management and that's why we go through this. If you're brand new to the channel and you just don't know anything about anything, this plane is probably a little bit more advanced than you wanna start with um, just because of the nature of what it does. You know, you're not gonna generally start on a float plane, but if you, if you fly from water, just remember, water is not very forgiving and you need to have something to ferry the plane back if you would like flip it over. So my suggestion is wait till you can drive it on grass because you can usually run these things on grass just fine. See how I did that? That really helped a lot. Okay. Um, my concern is that this is such a big bundle. My little zip tie might be not big enough. That is a lot of cable mass. Ugh. Goodness gracious. Yeah, it's helping me. I need to get big zip ties. That's crazy, guys. 
So big zip ties are a little heavier, so obviously you don't wanna use big zip ties unless you have to, uh, but the truth is this one, they're just a lot of wire there. So guys, uh, we have had a little bit of a hiatus on the Horizon stuff, so we're super excited to be bringing you a number of new releases. This one being sort of a pseudo new release because it was released many years ago and it's been updated. And we love the re-releases that we haven't done because some of them are amazing and we wish we would have done them before, but we just like literally weren't in the hobby at the time. And if you're anything like me and you're just returning to the hobby, you're in the right place because we try to help get people up to speed and maximize your RC budget for the most bang for your buck. And so we're really glad that you're here with us. Leave it in the comments below if you're new to the channel. It is encouraging to Megan and I. We work very hard to produce high quality content here and we produce a lot of it. So guys, if you enjoy the content and you wanna see more of it, let us know in the comments. It will make our day. Uh, we do, however, not always have time to get back to every comment, but just understand that we try to get to the questions if we can. And of course, if you're on Patreon, we see the comments a little bit more readily. Uh, we just don't list it as a defined benefit because then people overseas have to pay a value added tax. Okay. So in case you guys were wondering how that works, that's a pretty big bundle. I'm not real proud of it, but the thing is it might be the best I can do. And for that reason, I really would like to, I kind of wanted the antenna to go back. Hmm. What do you think camera crew? Are you disgusted by that yet? It's I know, and this, this canopy is like cool in the sense of what it can do, but it's also kind of like maybe not quite effective enough for the radio setup. My concern is if you get all those wires in there. I know, I know, and we have to land that, that thing. Well, the other thing is we have to make this have a home, a permanent home. Yeah. So I'm just like, which direction do I go? I feel like there's not really like a great option because there's not quite enough length to get this where I want, but there is enough length to like sort of maybe get out of the way. I think it's going to have to go that way. Okay. That's just the way it's going to be. Okay. So double-sided tape versus Velcro. Let's talk about double-sided tape. Double-sided tape is a nice utility for something like this. You don't have to use double-sided tape. You can use a chunk of Velcro from another application. Uh, that you had left over maybe lying around <clears throat> or you can just glue these down now if it's just a regular non-stabilized receiver that doesn't have as3x and safe then you don't need to be it's not spatially aware so the receiver is blissfully ignorant of its position in time and space whereas this is going to be making decisions based on its physical position in the stabilizer and in auto leveling okay and we'll teach you how to set that stuff up here shortly. It's just gonna take a couple of minutes. And it's actually one of the easier parts of the setup. Okay, so I'm gonna just throw this down here. Once we get that stuck on there nicely, these are really hard to get off of the back. Yes, I know, it's annoying to watch me fiddle with these things. Usually what I do is I, I like to get my X-Acto knife at this point and try to stab myself, but I'm gonna use my 0.7 millimeter driver and see if I can do the same thing and that way I won't stab myself quite as easy. I won't hurt at all when you No, I I'm not gonna stab myself this time. I've got it made up in my mind. I've had enough of stabbing myself on camera for one day. I haven't done it today yet. No. There's always time for that. Okay, so now we'll pull this down. Okay. Beautiful. Now in order to guarantee this wire chunk is gonna go back, I gotta be a little bit careful and I have to make some tough decisions sometimes. The tough decision in this case is gonna be, I would like it to be centered and so I am going to attempt to center it, okay? So I am pushing down hard and I'm moving that board. But I don't care, it's fine, I think we're good, okay? I don't like that bundle of wire, but it's okay. I think it's gonna survive. You see this? That linkage is coming from a 17 gram servo, so it's got a little bit of a little bit of beefcake to it. So I want to be super careful on that. Okay. 
I can't help but feel like these are upside down. <clears throat> like that lock should be the other way. But I could be mistaken. Also, I see that that's lifting at a weird angle. I almost wonder if I need to try to throw a zip tie all the way around that board. I think I'm going to do that. I don't want to risk it. So if you guys ever try to feed a zip tie through a tight spot like this, I like to bend it three or four times and so that it turns into like a loop. And then watch this. Now I can take that loop, actually bent it almost too much this time. And I can take and drop this down here just like this, go all the way around. And then once you get that, see, now I need to rebend it again. One more bend and we should be golden. Okay, now watch this guys. I'm gonna take and just manipulate the one side of the strap. Now there is an ESC on this board, I believe on the underside. Don't get your control linkages. Look at this guys, look at this. Now we've got that, we're gonna go underneath this linkage. And we're gonna bring it all the way around full circle. And we're just gonna zip tie this thing. Now we're not gonna hit the bind button with this. We're just gonna more or less just give it a little extra layer of protection, okay? Doesn't need to be like real, real, real tight, but the absolute position of this does not need to be totally flat either. It just needs to be stationary, okay? Because we're gonna learn the position of that and the AS3X and SAFE are going to take action on its exact position. And I'll show you that step in a little bit during the forward programming, okay? Remember, forward programming is nothing to be afraid of if you're new to the hobby. It's just basically where we do some of the setup from our transmitter on the receiver or from our transmitter for the receiver. And it's actually housed on the receiver because the activity is happening on the receiver and not necessarily on the transmitter, okay? So this is a transceiver, and that is a transceiver, believe it or not. This is transmitting and receiving, and this is transmitting and receiving all the time. So even though we call this the receiver, it's actually a transmitter and a receiver. There's full duplex communication going between both devices. So what that means for you is they're talking to each other and there's feedback being shared. Now, <clears throat> most of that is in the form of telemetry. The most critical items like stabilization, auto leveling, that have to be updated many, many, many times per second because of the yaw, the pitch, and the roll of the plane, that's all handled on this onboard processor, okay? But then the connection between you and it is controlled just by you. And so then the Johnny on the spot decisions like fail safe, like if you would lose radio connection, it's all handled in here. So pretty cool. I'm not sure if you guys knew that. If you didn't know that, uh, throw it in the comments below. Look at this, this antenna, we gotta do something about this, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't want that in the way every time I deal with the battery. So I'm just gonna duck, just duck and tuck. I'm gonna just tuck this back here. Now this is easier than if we had a diversity antenna like the 637T would have a diversity antenna which just means that there's actually two styles of antennas or two antennas. And look, now that's back there, okay? Cool. Yeah, pretty simple stuff, guys. So we've got a little bit more to do once we get the radio setup done. But for now, what we need to do is we need to probably go ahead and get this thing energized and bound, okay? So we're gonna walk out. We're gonna go down to bind and just highlight it, but not actually click in. And then I'm gonna take my battery and I'm gonna just see, we do, we do need to mark the CG here at some point too so we can manipulate that to where it needs to be. And then mark for our battery. This is gonna be a terrible one to load the battery in. Yeah, I can tell. You know, that's one thing guys, we forget about it. We have seen huge advancements in the ease of use with these airplanes, okay? Um, <clears throat> and so when you get one of these re-releases from yesteryear, there's sometimes a little bit of a compromise from here to there. Loading the battery on this would be something that would typically be a little bit more refined, let's say. Okay, now plugging this in. Okay, now come around so you can see. We have a flashing red light. We don't care about that. I am going to, I can't do that yet. I need this forward but I can't really do what I want because I'm afraid of the nose gear. Okay, it hasn't opened the gear yet, so we'll just be kind of careful. So I'm gonna go to bind and I'm gonna be ready. 
Then I'm going to press this button, look for the flashy light on the spectrum receiver, and then I'm going to hit yes, and then I'm going to go to bind. Okay, so the gear went up. Kind of humming a lot. I don't like that noise. Okay, so. That was sweet. Oh, <laughs> that is so cool. But it's, it's humming less. So I'm gonna lay this down on the wheels. That is, that is totally sweet. Did you see how slow they were? Yeah. Okay, so, guys, I'm loving it. That is so, so cool. Elevator is not hooked up yet, by the way. Yeah. And then the flaps are not hooked up yet. So I'm hearing buzzing. And the buzzing makes me nervous because buzzing usually means, oh wow, bright lights too, look at that. There's a strobe, there's a landing light, and there's nav lights, got to love it. Okay, now throttle cut is currently on, and I've tested it, and it did not start the motor. Throttle cut is off, all the way up, all the way down. Throttle cut's on, and everything seems good there. Okay, so now our first, order of business is gonna be getting the flaps attached. Or see if we can figure out what's buzzing. Rudder's working, elevator's working. Oh, that's the gear. That's the gear. The 17 gram servo. Yep, that's the gear. That is one complicated mechanism, guys. Oh man, I love the gear, it's so cool. Guys, that is so cool. Okay, we gotta stop looking at that. We'll come back to that, guys. I promise we will not leave you high and dry. Part of the reason we do these unbox build radio setups is because people have genuine questions about how a plane is gonna come out of the box, okay? The other reason we do them is because people need help setting them up, right? I'm gonna have to get four steps for this step. I don't see a way around it. So if you guys don't have a pair of forceps, um, get yourself a pair of forceps. They are very helpful. Uh, the straight tips are used a lot less than the bent tips, just full disclosure. Um, I just got these at some hardware store or whatever. Nothing special about them. Now I'm gonna move the flap up and down. I'm also gonna take and then spin this so that it's horizontal. And I'm gonna slide this into the flap servo. Goodness gracious, that's way down already. Then I'm gonna take this one and see, that's like gonna be really hard to do. Okay, so you see what I'm doing now. We have to do a little bit of negotiation on where that servo is actually going to act. So I'm gonna go back down to flap system. I'm gonna set one to one direction and one to the other direction. Okay, so that's the other direction. Just check them for mechanical binding here. Okay. Hon, you wanna look inside the plane there? See how it's moving? Mm -hmm. So I got it 100, now I'm in the neutral setting, right in the center. So in the neutral setting, I actually want this to be the setting for the flaps to be all the way down. Okay, so I may need to reverse that because I can tell what direction they're gonna go now. Okay, yeah. So now I need to actually actuate the flaps the other way so that I can line one of them up. This is gonna be like really awkward, folks, especially to film. You can turn that light on. There you go. I'm just zoomed in so I'm not in your no, you're, you're not gonna be in my way. It's not like a, some amazing part of the video. Right. We're not like some cinematic step here, guys, of watching me kind of dug into the belly of the beast, so to speak. Okay, so now this one, oh gosh, this is gonna be awkward. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way the other way. Once you get them lined up in there, then, and only then, can you figure out how to manipulate the actual servo position, okay? Does that make sense, folks? Mm -hmm. So I've got them both slid in there now, okay? So now I wanna try, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna just physically move the flaps with my fingers, 
until they're square and parked, okay? Now, I have this all the way back and I actually want it to be the other way around, but I guess I'm gonna go ahead and set that position, aren't I? Because I'm gonna then reverse the flaps, I think. So let's go ahead and set this now by tightening this set screw. Okay. Which nowadays we would have a grub screw in there, but like I don't have a big problem with that. Okay, so now that that's tight, now I'm gonna run this. Oh, that is so sweet. We just don't see engineering like that on these planes. They're just so much easier to build with like two servos instead of that complex mechanism. Right. So now I can either flip them here, which I'll probably just flip them here. I'll just do minus 100 here. And then I'll just do plus 100 here, okay? okay. You guys understand why I'm doing that? I just happen to have it backward. I could just also reverse the servo, but whatever. Okay, so now let's look at the flaps from this side. Guys, I gotta say, now that the landing gear are down, this thing is like so much cooler than I thought it was gonna be. I love that the lights are really bright. I was nervous about that at first. Okay, so take off flaps, then landing flaps. Now, I'm gonna do an elevator correction of like 10, okay? And then I'm gonna do an elevator correction of like six. That is so sweet. Now, roll left. Okay, that's going the wrong way. So let's go ahead and go to servo setup, travel. I wanna see, before I get too far ahead of myself, if I can. Yes, I can. That is pretty sweet, actually. I'm loving it. The only thing I might need to do is I might need to take some more throw, but I think our linkage is gonna start to bind, so I don't think I can get any more because I can actually change the bite point on there and I could change this to 150 or something, you know, closer to 150 and then potentially get those flaps out into more of a barn door setting. But I'm happy with the way they look right now. Okay. Now we also need to go here to travel and click over to reverse or reverse ailerons. That's correct. Looking at the other side, that is correct. That's correct. So basically when I do this, it's going to push this wing down. It's going to lift that wing up. Okay, and opposite is true. Okay, very good. Elevator is not hooked up, but I wanna see if it's going the right way. Um, well, it's not tightened, so it's really kinda of hard to tell what it's doing. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna tighten it. I'm, I may have to untighten it here in a minute, but for now, for the sake of just testing. Okay, elevator up, that's wrong. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll over to the elevator and reverse it. Now the elevator up, elevator down. Elevator up, elevator down. Okay, now I want to sort of straighten this. You see this bend right here? That bend is unacceptable, okay? That's gonna cause problems. So I'm gonna straighten that right now and hope to God that that thing stays stiff. If it doesn't, I will take and undo this and slide something over there as a collar to make it stronger. Okay. But for now, elevator up, elevator down. More up than down by a pretty considerable amount there, but it's because I'm not centered in my throw. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this and you see what I'm talking about? Whoa, there's quite a bit of a bend in this length. See that? See, look at that. Yeah. That's, well, whatever. I guess, uh, yeah, that's maybe not so perfect. See the twist? Mm -hmm. I got it more square than it was. By the way, that noise you're hearing is in fact the landing gear servo. Ooh, that is just such a scary setting, okay? I'm gonna turn this because I wanna have at least a little bit of a positive. I'm just afraid if it slips, it's gonna slip that way, which means I'm gonna have no up elevator. I'm gonna have down elevator, but not up, if that would slip. So what I was thinking is the other thing I could do is I could bend, I could bend the wire in front of the servo just a little teeny bit, but I'm gonna lose some length here. If I can do it, I'm gonna see if I can get away with it. Now the, the mechanical trim is gonna be a bear cat now if I do that. But see then what that's gonna do is that's gonna stop it from wanting to walk out of that hole, okay? 
Oh, it stopped. It's so much nicer when it's quiet. Guys, I gotta say, I, I can't believe how easy this build has been. I, know. I thought it was gonna be, oh, we gotta reverse the rudder too. Why would we not? Rudder left, rudder right. There's not much throw on that. And that is not very well centered. So we're gonna have to center that. So the ailerons are nice and centered. The elevator is centered, the rudder's not. So camera crew and I are gonna do that next. This should be done with the same screwdriver that I just put away, but it's gonna be a little hard to get in there. Now, just to be clear, there's the rudder. Okay, so they are separate adjustments. So I'm gonna loosen this screw. I may have to brace this with my fingertip. Loosen the screw. Oh, it's the landing gear, because if, if you have load on it, it pushes on the servo. Okay, that makes sense. So now look at the servo, or look at the position back there. Can you tell me when it's square, please? Just center it, there you go. just center it. Just take your fingers and center it. Does that look pretty perfect? Okay, hold it tight. Now I'm just gonna tighten this screw over here, guys. Nothing special, just setting the set screw that we just loosened. Um, okay, all right, I think we got it. All right, so crazy part is, short of marking the CG and forward programming, like this plane is like ready, it's like done. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. We didn't put the seats back in, but... We put the prop on. Well, yeah, that's true. And yeah, we do have a couple of steps. You're right. Good We're point. This is, this is a sweet plane. I'm so excited to see this thing on water, too. I'm sure it's going to be really good because, look, if you tip it, it's not going to want to flip over because you've got the canoes on the end. Now, also, I want to just... I, I got to look at... I got to look at this. Retracts are amazing. I wanna see these things before we go any further. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna geek out on this for just a second here. Give them a close up, let's do it. Oh, by the way, my gear, my gear switch is backward. So I'm gonna go over here to the gear and switch it. That is so sweet. And then it, it locks this leg out so that the springs work. That is so cool. All right, and then the steerable. Oh, the water rudder is retractable. Oh, that is so sweet. Oh man, they have thought of everything on this plane. It's so funny because the only thing it's missing is like a gear door, mm -hmm. um, which to be honest with you, I don't know, they probably don't on the real one. That is so cool. Okay, I'm really liking this plane. Okay, we gotta check CG too. Don't let me get excited and forget that because this plane is um, needs to have that done, okay? I remember reading that somewhere. All right, so real quick, let's talk about control surfaces. So we're gonna get our control surfaces finalized before we go any further. All right, so camera crew and I are gonna stand behind the plane. All right, why do we stand behind the plane? So we can verify everything. Okay, elevator up, elevator down. Roll left, roll right. Y'all left, y'all right, and nose gear, y'all left, y'all right. Everything's good there. Take off flaps, landing flaps. The correction for the elevator is subtle. Looks like the correction is backward though. Okay, so how do we know it's backward? Turn your flaps, go a lot, and see what happens. Oh no, that's not backward, that's right. Yeah, because you're going to... With an inboard flap, on most planes, when you deploy the flaps, you're gonna have a ballooning effect. So the elevator will, will counter that. Creates a little extra drag, and then keeps everything in orientation. So we actually do have that right, it's just way too much. So I'm gonna turn that, I had it like six and 10. Mm -hmm. I think we're just gonna start with six and 10. Okay. We'll see if that's enough. So yeah, guys, really easy setup so far. I don't think that that's, too much, I think that's about perfect. I think that's about perfect too. Love the strobes. I didn't think we were gonna get strobes. So this thing's gonna be sweet. Cannot wait to see it on the water. Now, let's talk about AS3X and SAFE, okay? AS3X and SAFE are done through forward programming, so we're gonna do that next. Well, actually, I wanna try something real quick. Okay, we don't have anything there, as expected. So we're gonna go to forward programming. Gyro settings, 
first time setup. You have to do this after you've set up all your surfaces, okay? So this just says any changes, you gotta go through first time setup again. Okay, fine. Set the model level and continue. Now set the model on its nose and continue. That's the orientation. Okay. Now we're going to continue through the setup. Gain channel select. This is going to be the right knob. So I'm going to turn the right knob. I'm going to click and go over to right knob. Okay. And then I'm going to hit apply. Now it's going to reboot. So just be aware. Watch for one dance. There's gonna be two dances for the next step, okay? All right, so now that it's rebooted, we can go back in. So we're gonna go to gyro settings, AS3X settings. This is where we can also check things by changing that gain to like four times, which we'll just do now, and then we'll change it back down later. <clears throat> Flight mode setup. So we have to tell which channel because it doesn't know what it's dealing with. We're on aux two, not aux one because aux one is flaps. How do we know? Because we set it up. Okay, now it says, see how that changes? That tells you that it's working. When you were in that, it had aux one listed as switch. D. I know, it's okay, a default. It that's inhibited now in the middle setting. It's active and it's active. It's inhibited here and it's active here. Why did it inhibit the third one? That's kind of weird. Okay, then we can go to first time safe setup. Okay, so this gear noise that I'm hearing, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. Take the pressure off the plane, grab that nose gear, pull it towards you. Thank you. You guys see that? So it's just, if you hear a hum on a, 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 any sort of servo for a long period of time, the motor is trying, that's not good. Cause it's gonna get hot. And on this one, it has a round output, you know, so the output, so there's the output shaft, which is like a spline. And then you slide onto it, this big output, okay? In sometimes they're levers and sometimes they're round and sometimes they look like crosses or X's or whatever and they spin and then they you know, move mechanical linkages. Well, in this case, because that nose gear is allowed to compress because of the way they designed it, that's why you're hearing it buzz. But the problem is there is a feedback servo or feedback trim pot inside of that mechanism off of one of the gear outputs. And it's, it's looking for a position so that the feedback is exactly what it expects. If it doesn't get exactly what it expects, it tries to call that position out. And that's why you hear the bus. That's what you're hearing. Okay, so you can fix that. Now, AS3X is a little bit different because it's always trying to like manipulate the aircraft and offset environmental impact. So you're gonna hear movement, but it's different. It's not like a solid hum. Solid hums are what's gonna keep your, your motors, it's gonna burn your motors out. Okay, so first time safe setup. We already have the flight mode set. You can see it updated. And then I'm gonna continue. I want safe to be in this mode. Okay. This is the part where it's gonna attitude trim. Remember, told you it wouldn't matter if it was not exactly in the correct position because now it's updated. Okay, so we're in flight mode three. We want safe to be self-level and angle demand. In this mode, we want it off. This is just speaking to safe, not AS3X. AS3X mode. And you hear our audio events are now tied to the reality of the situation. See, 
but those are just labels, guys. Okay, now we'll go to next. Now watch, it's gonna reboot and you'll see two dances. Dance one, dance two. That's how you know safe is on. And that's gonna happen every time that the receiver starts up. It does take a second to connect, by the way. Okay, so then gyro settings, AS3X settings, fixed adjustable gains. So we're adjustable. So as you can see, we have adjustable. If you didn't have enough channels for that on AUX3, you could actually just set them to fixed, but I'm gonna leave them adjustable. And then there's priority, which I never mess with. All right, very good. And then the heading. You'll see there's nothing. There's nothing here, because it's off. Okay, so you can actually set a heading hold and you can have that turn on to hold the position at a different attitude than just flat and level, okay? All right, so getting back to the point, we now have four times four X and we have adjustable based on this. So it's gonna be very sensitive, but only after I give throttle, whereas safe is going to be active immediately, okay? How do we know if safe is on? There's two ways. You can move your stick and see if there's enough movement to help you understand that it's on, or you can flip the plane over. We are not in safe, are we? Because nope. if we were in safe, off, it would do that, okay? So it's trying to level the aircraft, and now that it's level, it's good. Now look at the elevator, it's gonna try to level the aircraft. Now look at the elevator, it's gonna try to level the aircraft. It brings it to a level state, and then it stops. So that you're gonna go to the middle, Quick, 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 it's trying to find the quickest route, okay? That's how you can tell safe is on. Now, safe is off and AS3X is off. There's no correction, I'm gonna give throttle. Throttle cuts off and I've given throttle. Okay, now throttle cuts back on. Now there should be quite a bit of stabilization, but I'm not seeing, oh, because I'm in off. Now AS3X is on. Now we should see correction but we're not seeing correction. And that usually means that we have something not quite right. So we're gonna go find out what's not quite right. Because here's the thing, safe is on clearly, and we've tested it, but AS3X is evidently not. So let's find out what we did wrong. Forward programming, connecting. Takes a second guys, don't worry, that's normal. Gyro settings. AS3X settings. There's four times AS3X gains. There's your kind of like your default run of the mill. Okay. Off, Off in that setting. Safe mode. Okay, so that's flight mode three, so that's all fine. So you may turn up, you may have more gains in safe, so you can actually set those to a higher level if you want. But I think there's one, sometimes this happens, I've noticed. Inhibit. No, it just, it takes a second to load. Off. Okay. Okay, so it's definitely changing the flight mode too. So now what we need to do is we need to find out in system setup, gain channel select. It is aux three, that's correct, that's what we want. So aux three is what we want. Aux three is this, I think. Maybe it's not, maybe that's our problem. I'm gonna go over one, and then aux three is here. Ah, aux three is working. Well, that's very weird. I'm gonna give throttle again, throttle cuts off. 
Over 25% should activate. I'm in AS3X. Oh, it's working now. It's working now. Okay, how do I know it's working? Because I'm looking at the rudder and it's moving like crazy. I don't know why it didn't work earlier. That's good, that's good. You can definitely see it very easy. Elevator, elevator, aileron, aileron. And you can hold the plane in any orientation to test this step. So I'm gonna show you what I'm looking at. Okay, so I'm gonna just look at the roll. It's gonna be contrary. So if I roll, it's gonna go down. If I roll up, it's gonna go up. And I, I realize I'm upside down, but just work with me, people. Rudder, try to line this up so you can see this. Rudder there and rudder there. So it's just, and just so you can see the transmitter sitting there. So if it's the environment moving it, it's gonna fight. Now look at this, elevator is gonna go up. When I go up, it's down in this case. And then down and then up. It's whatever direction you're moving it, but always look at both control surfaces because sometimes you're gonna have split controls. Okay, meaning that you're gonna have one servo moving this and one servo moving that. In this case, we have one control moving them both. Now, in order to fully validate this, I need to be able to adjust the gain. So I'm moving and looking at the rudder, it's moving very good, all the way down. Here it's quiet, give them a close up shot so they can see. So it's off right now, that's 50%, that's all the way up. That's halfway. Now show what I'm doing with my hand here so they can see I'm turning the knob all the way down. Now I'm turning it all the way up and I'm moving at the same rate, the same oscillation. Off, on. Okay, so what that means for us, come on around camera crew. What that means for us is short of, I'm gonna go to forward programming throttle cuts on takes a second to load don't worry gyro settings now I'm gonna go into AS3X settings and I'm gonna change my gain from four back to one oops one okay now why do I change it from four to one because in four I have a ton of amplitude on the AS3X which is probably gonna be too much how do you know if it's too much if the plane's flying along and you get to like 50% of your stick input for your throttle and it starts oscillating on the elevator or the rudder axis or the roll axis. So any of the three axis of control or combination they're in, that's an overcorrection. That's why it's nice to have a knob because then you can turn it down without totally losing it. Or you can turn it up if you don't have enough. And then whatever I do, is I like to make it about 50% so that if it's like a super windy day, I can kick it up a little bit. But then if I go to the next plane, it's not gonna be way out of whack because this will then impact the other plane. Now you can go in and fix your settings once you've landed if you find that you really just get it dialed in. Or you can go in and change a little bit more on aileron or a little bit less on rudder or a lot on rudder and nothing on aileron, which would be unusual, but you can do that because you will tell how the plane flies, and then you can make adjustments accordingly, which is super, super cool. Also, I just wanna look at my landing gear. It doesn't look like there's any adjustment for the actual throw on the landing gear. So if they come out, they're gonna lock, and that's just where they're gonna be, okay? So I think in terms of tracking, that'll be something we'll watch for. Also, in terms of that, you'll know how to fix it. If it starts buzzing on you, just kind of push it out. You'll be good. Now also, to get the canopy open, you just lift the front, which is weird, mm -hmm. okay? And it's a magnetic attachment point. I almost am tempted to put a strap or something on there. What do you think? So guys, this plane, this plane is ready to fly with the exception of the prop and the center of gravity. Now, we do have to have the prop on, but I now trust this plane. I have vetted it. I am comfortable installing the prop. And yes, I'm gonna do it while it's on. By the way, for those of you that are worried about props and danger, it is a valid concern. There is a certain amount of danger that comes with having a prop installed. And for that reason, you'll want to be more careful so that you don't get hurt. But at the end of the day, you're gonna be battering this plane in the future. Uh, so, you know, I'm not, I don't wanna 
you know, the Mr. Nanny state here. Throttle cuts on and tested. Obviously, it's been tested or I wouldn't have actually put it on. Okay, so I'm going to just push this back. And then I want to turn this nut until the collet bites. And as you tighten this, it's going to squish down and it's going to bite the shaft, okay? But this needs to be pushed back. There we go. All right, so now, oh, push too far. Pushing that back, tightening down. Camera crew, you're kind of in my way. I need to turn the wing, I'm sorry. I gotta close the canopy too. The reason those L brackets are not the other way is because you can slam the lid shut. Now, if they were the other way, it would slam, it would not slam, it would just break them. Mm. Okay. This is just such an unusual plane. It's so different than usual shapes and sizes of what we're used to seeing. Okay, now I am going to, before I put the spinner on and lose access to tightening that, I'm gonna take my throttle and I'm gonna give it throttle. That is way more power than I thought it was gonna have. Yeah. Throttle cuts on and it's tested. And it also has a lot of the downforce. So this one will be fun to tame. I can't wait to fly it. Now that we have tested the throttle cut, we can go ahead and put this on and make it look nice and pretty. Be kind of nice to see a plastic spinner on there, but I can live with it because it is pretty and it's protected somewhat up there. Also, normally, what's one of the things that happens on prop planes, camera crew? You squish your tip. No, you what? splash water all over because they're a tractor prop that's out in front of the plane. Oh, on this on one, plane. there's gonna be some protection from the turbulence on the prop that's going to hopefully keep from splashing water up onto the motor, which is kind of cool. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna see how this goes. And now that's torqued down. Now, guys, again, <clears throat> I understand some of you would not do this. I'm not sure when you would do it, but we're gonna test it. Ready? Throttle cuts on. That's way more than I thought. I know, I know. I'm like super happy with that power because I was nervous. I was like, 3S, really? Is yeah. that gonna be enough to do this? So very excited to see this thing, the Sea Wind. We gotta now check CG. Okay, guys, so CG is easy enough to do. I'm gonna put some of these tools away as I go for my calipers. Calipers, of course, are a tool that we use all the time when setting the CG. Uh, we, we actually don't have to set the CG. They've already worked it out for us here at Tower. And so all we have to do is just mark it, test it, and then we usually try to mark the actual position of the battery, okay? They give you a range as well as like a recommended starting point. Okay, what's the range? 44 to 70 millimeters back. Holy the crap, out. 44 to 70? Yep, and then it says we recommend starting at 51. They actually give it to you in inches, but you have your calipers, so. Okay, well, I can do either one. So but I'm gonna just go to 51. If, there's, okay. if they're recommending 51 and they're giving me one, then I'm just gonna do 51. Okay. Okay, so. so well, they're marking it on the bottom. Yeah, but just to be clear, it's in front of this marking. Yeah, but they're not in the same position. Okay, well, that figures. They're marking the bottom? Yes. Yeah, I guess you'll be able to test it from the bottom, which means I need to put it back on the plane stand. So if you can give me just a little extra <laughs> space. I gotta flip this thing around. Surprisingly easy to pick this plane up. I thought it was gonna be weird to pick up, but I'm just not sure I have enough clearance. Clearance. Okay. Okay, I'll live with that. So 51.11 is what I show on my calipers. Okay. And so I'm just gonna check this. Now, how do I check this? I go back like that and I make a dent, okay? And then I'm gonna go in about the same spot and we're just gonna do the same thing. Now, folks, if you're new to Brian Phillips RC and you don't know what we do here, we mark the CG with calipers and then we make a big, ugly mark. Now, you don't have to do it that way, but I'm gonna tell you this. There are a million ways to skin this cat there is not a right or wrong way so long as the plane flies well. And if you have another way that deviates from this, 
by all means, do that instead. But we've had such good luck with it, and it's so easy. But then what we like to do is we will say, okay, now that we've done this, by the way, there's only a very small differential in the actual position of the nose gear in terms of the weight distribution. And these are gonna stay exactly in the same spot. So I don't even care if the gear are up or down, okay? Because there will be a slight difference and it's gonna go slightly more tail heavy with the nose gear up. On the center of gravity, we are tail heavy currently. So what I need to do is I need to look I gotta say, this plane is just weird to handle because of the shape of it. It's not as hard to pick up as I thought, but it's still weird to handle. All right, so let's get inside of here in the belly of the beast, and then let's look at how this is gonna line up, okay? So this battery obviously is gonna be only so big, right? There's only so much you can do with it, okay? Like that's all the way forward. So the only thing I could say about that is if you were to take like the leads and try to move them forward, it's not like I'm gonna add nose weight to it. Although there's people that would do that. How tail heavy was it? Well. Sorry, I'm trying to find the spot I marked. I went out further than I would normally go. Yeah, right here. So I'm on 51 millimeters and it's slightly tail heavy, but they're saying you can go up to 70. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know, like really, if I've got the battery all the way forward into the bulkhead, I don't know what else I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna add nose weight and make it permanently nose heavy, but what you could do, you could actually run a 3200 pack or 2700 that's 3200, but that's 4S. I don't know if we have a 3200 3S. Do we, camera crew? Yes, we do. Yeah. Booyah, right there, okay? So if 3200 fits, maybe that's the ticket to start. You know, because we were talking about how we were afraid of the 3S 2200, so small. Yeah, but if you stand behind that, you're probably not gonna be very concerned. By the way, an interesting detail on this plane when you press the nose gear down on accident and there's no power applied, the, uh, it's weird because it, it doesn't retracts. go back out. Yeah. So it's actually quite tricky to get it to go. There we go. I got it to go. Um, all right. So how am I going to do this? This, I got to say, the worst part of this plane is getting the battery in and out so far. I'm not sure the 32 is going to go. I think it will. Don't you worry, I'm, I'm used to sticking things in. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, so you were, you were saying that you weren't sure you agreed the fact that this won't fit. Are Is you that, saying I was right? No, I don't want to go that far. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just try this here. Oh yeah, that's better for the CG, for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, it's like, now it's nose heavy. I would say that's like probably more appropriate for a starting point. But you know, we can go all the way back to 70 and still make it work according to the manual. Yeah. So I guess, honestly, I'm not sure that it's worthy of such heartache and concern. I'm not happy about that thing popping out. My tray popped out when I pulled hard on that battery thing. I mean, yes, you can only pull so hard. So you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. I'm gonna have to put some China glue in there right now and hope for the best. Cause China glue to the savior to save the day. So I, I don't know, hon. I'm not sure what we're gonna do. If you guys uh, have comments about the way we executed our CG testing on this, leave them in the comments below. But truth is, I don't really think that there's some magic bullet here because if they're giving us such a huge range. Yeah. So normally I would like want to let that cook off for a little bit, but it's just such an awkward spot. I'm just going to stick it in there and be done with it. Okay. And that's what I did. So it's in there. That China glue will set and it'll be fine. 
If it's not fine, we'll learn the hard way by having to deal with it out in the field. Now, we also have a 2700, but this is a 4S as well. So yeah, 3200 3S or 2200 3S. I think we'll probably just go with 2200 3S and just hope that I'm a good enough pilot to be able to salvage it um, in the event. I don't think it's gonna be so unrecoverable that I can't fly the thing back. Yeah. Also, we have SAFE and AS3X to help a little bit with that. The other thing too is just looking at the way the cabling is on this. I just wanna talk about something right now because I just saw it. I literally had a wire pulling out right here. This wire was pulling out, why? Because that is going to something. <laughs> I think I'm probably gonna need to be a little bit careful on this plane because I feel like that is gonna end up yanking out at some point if I'm not careful. I don't normally have a problem. If you turn on your light, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me grab a screwdriver so I can point. See this guys? That wire was pulled out or almost pulled out. That's not good. I used to take hot glue and slather it along here so that these couldn't pull out unless you were pulling all of them out. But in this model, because I don't have enough length to actually lay it back, I kind of left it vertical like that. I feel like we might be somewhat vulnerable. So I may end up having to take and turn this down like that and do one more big zip tie because that is gonna prevent it from falling out or applying some sort of weird G-force action to it. Do you understand what I'm saying there? Yeah. Does that make sense or do you think I'm overthinking this? Are you gonna, you're not gonna squish that linkage there, right? I'm not gonna pull it tight. I'm just gonna simply put some downward pressure on it. Okay. And all that's gonna do is it's going to allow me to have peace of mind that this won't yank out on its own because I don't believe I did anything to make that come out. Okay, okay. so long zip tie this time. It's gonna go around under the ESC. Okay, so I've got a double and a triple bend. See, double and triple. It's going down under like this. And we'll just kind of run that all the way around. And then now that we're through, we can pull that up. Sorry to block your view, folks. By the way, here on Brian Phillips RC, we've been doing this for almost, well, well, we've been doing it for nine years, but not quite 10. Mm -hmm. And uh, we really do enjoy putting this high quality, long format content together. Uh, we've had um, a lot of growth over the years on the channel, but we still really like to keep things the way that we started, which is truthful, honest, and helpful to the RC community. And so if you guys think we're doing anything good for you in the RC community, and you wanna help support us, one of the best ways you can do it is to buy these planes from the links. Yes, we do make small commissions from the different companies that we work with. And it's an easy way for you to give us a pat on the back and you don't have to actually write a check for it, which is really nice. But at the same time, we want you guys to know that we are compelled to tell the truth and only the truth. So help us God. That did snap that time. Did you hear it? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it always snapped or if it's just the one snaps and the other doesn't. But at the end of the day, our objective is to please our audience and not necessarily the manufacturers. So if we see something that looks like a duck, we will generally call it like a duck. Let me give you an example from this build. This looks like crap, okay? That's one of the worst looking things in the whole plane and yet it's right there. The good news is once you close the canopy, you won't see it, okay? I love the fact that there's some LEDs on here. The last plane we did for a similar manufacturer did not have LEDs and I was a bit disappointed, okay? Doesn't mean it's, uh, you know, some huge earth shattering problem that can't be overcome, but it's true that I like LEDs a lot, okay? All right, guys, that is held down. It's ugly, I, I admit it's not pretty, but that gets us satisfied here in twofold. One, we're away from this. We don't have to worry about touching the moving part. We're not worried about this now coming undone because everything is secured. It's gonna keep its position here. I'd really like to have this like that. Now it's caught on the edge, okay? 
I don't want it any tighter than that. I just want it to kind of be there in a bundle. It's not my best work in cable management, but it's definitely gonna get the job done, I think. And if you guys wanna copy me, you can copy me. If you wanna do it a little different, that's fine too. At the end of the day, I like putting these planes together, but I like flying them a lot better. And that's one of the things that I have always stayed true to is even though I love the prospect of just having an easy evening of putting a plane together, we keep doing this for you, our audience, our wonderful audience that has opened doors for us in this hobby that we wouldn't have been able to open for ourselves. So we appreciate you. You're a big part of our lives for that reason. And so we're eternally grateful in that regard. But it just definitely is not without effort. So you guys just remember that. Let's see how this sits. That looks so sweet. Oh man, I want that so bad. Although I don't know if I want to deal with that every time. <laughs> no. I mean, it's totally sweet though, hon. Is that not like awesome? Cool. How often do we get four chairs? But like, you know, if you can't put four chairs in, then it doesn't really do you much good now, does it? Right. So at the end of the day, I think we're probably gonna start out on 2200. We'll see what type of flight time we get. If it ends up being close to five minutes, then we'll be fine. We'll just use a voltage alarm. If you guys don't know what a voltage alarm, let's show you that real quick, because that's what we do here on Brian Phillips RC is we like to show the things that we talk about just in case you're new to the hobby or maybe just returning to the hobby. And we want you to understand what the heck we're talking about. That is the crashed one. Why is the good one in here? Isn't the good one supposed to be out? Yes. Oh, that's, that's a voltage alarm. Was. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, you got all this smart telemetry stuff. Why don't you just use that, Brian? Well, that's because this is super easy and it works and it costs a couple bucks. You can see the cell values, very simple. And then you can set the alarm to go off at whatever you want. So like on this one, we might set it to like 3.6 because we wanna make sure we preserve a little extra juice or 3.3 since it's a prop plane. Usually 3.6 on like EDFs if I wanna make sure I get a one go around. But if you have a Spectrum Avian ESC, you'll be able to add thrust reverse, which would be super handy when you're out on the water. And you'll be able to get telemetry that's gonna come back even through the cheaper receiver. Okay, so the 631. All right, hopefully that's answered all your questions. We marked the CG. We set up AS3X and safe. We did all the wiring. We obviously did the assembly. And we've got this beautiful, sweet looking plane to show for. And I am actually super excited to see this thing in the air. It's gonna be something else. I can't wait to fly it on water for you. But honestly, at this point, I'm just gonna be glad to fly it, period, because I'm really excited. I think it's gonna be a good plane and I think it's gonna do everything we want it to do. Some concerns are A, do we have enough flap setting? I think we do. B, are we gonna have enough power, which has pretty much been settled because it was blowing my bananas. Yeah. And uh, D, the elevator has a pretty nasty bend in it. Show them the left to right. Mm -hmm. Now, that can be fixed if you really wanna get right down to it. But do you wanna know if I'm gonna fix it, camera crew? I'm gonna go with no. You are gonna go with, you know me too well. I am not going to fix it. I'm gonna fly it like I found it. Yeah. And then I'm gonna tell you guys in full gory details <laughs> how bad it rolled because of it. My guess is we won't even know. The, as much force as comes off of that prop, I, like the elevator is gonna, I don't know. Yeah, I know. And that's what I was thinking about too, is I'm thinking about, goodness gracious, it's got so much P factor on it. I hope it doesn't submarine the thing. Well, that'd be fun. Sea wind 1.4. Amazing job tower from yesteryear. What a cool plane. We are excited to be bringing it to you here on Brian Phillips RC. Thanks guys for watching. Our long format videos are long. We get it. Um, we understand that there are other options that are shorter and probably a little bit more to the point, but we hope that we're bringing just enough value that we keep you coming back for the exceptionally long videos. Because <laughs> that's what we do best here on Brian Phillips RC because I'm long-winded in real life and for the camera.
So guys, super cool plane. Can't wait to get it in the air. Like I said earlier, like 14 other times, we get commissions if you buy these things from the links, but you have to follow the links. If you don't follow the links, we don't get commissions. We do depend on that to help support our family. It's part of our lifestyle of advancing the hobby, which includes things like building giant expensive ponds in our yard and not the least of which is buying land from which to use for hobby and the advancement therein. So you are helping to fund all that stuff and we really appreciate it. Most of what we make on YouTube gets blown immediately um, into perpetuity because the bank is expecting some payments for some of this stuff, just so you know. But that being said, we do love doing it and it's also uh, a big enough part of our lives that we'd probably do it if you, even if you weren't helping us. So at this point, we're just really excited that you are there for us, the world's best audience and special thanks to our Patreons. You know who you are. We've got a group of about 35 to 40 people that help support us on a monthly basis. We really appreciate you. And then on YouTube, I think we're up to like about 10 to 15 right now. Mm -hmm. It does move up and down a little bit because people have changes in their finances and all that good jazz. We get it, we've been there, done that. We know what it's like to have a job, lose a job, have a kid, you know, that sort of stuff. Things that change your financial outlook. Get a different job, maybe get a big raise or a bonus. We've been through a lot of that in our lives in our careers and we get it. But at the end of the day, we wanna just bring some excitement. And if you guys aren't flying right now, you need to just get in the air already because it's one of the most invigorating RC experiences you can have because we do cars, we do trucks, we do SUVs, we do rock crawlers, fast cars, slow cars. We do all that. We're gonna do boats too when we get the pond set up. We obviously gonna be doing more float planes. We do have float planes, we've done them in the past. We've done tractor stuff, bailing, hay, all sorts of crazy things. We've done a ton of weird stuff on this channel like e-bikes. You guys especially love e-bikes, but we know you do uh, because we've been to Joe Nall and we've seen about 50 of them try to run in front of me in my rental car. Um, but they are fun, by the way, in case you were wondering. And if we love it, we're gonna review it, but it's not necessarily gonna be a mainstay. Our main thing is gonna be fixed wing RC aircraft. That's what we do best, that's what we love the most. But aviation in general too, PPG. We just have a lot of different aviation and RC related stuff here on Brian Phillips RC. So at the end of the day, when it comes to the inclusive, amazing experience that you're gonna get with fixed wing, even helicopters don't touch it in my opinion. Some of you heli guys are gonna hate that I said that. But the truth is I like helicopters too, but it's a lot harder. So you gotta start somewhere, but I love it all. So you're at the right place and we're in good company. So thanks for being here with us and thanks for watching us build this thing. I cannot wait to fly it. Obviously it's a little bit dark right now though. Yes. So we'll be flying this in the light, I think, on the Maiden. I so stay tuned. If you guys are looking for the flight video and you're like, where is the flight? I've been watching this whole, Brian, I've been watching this video for hours. Where's the flight? Goodness gracious, leave me hanging. Don't worry. It's actually published at the same time as the Unbox Build Radio setup. So you just watch the other part is the maiden flights. We separated them out because we found that the vast majority of our clientele likes to watch the flights and they don't necessarily want to watch the unbox on all of them. They just go back and watch the unbox build radio setup when there's something weird or they have a question they want to answer. So don't ever feel bad if you do that, but just remember to smash the like button on each and every video that you watch. We get good like ratios on YouTube, but we have terrible retention rates. I wonder why. So there you have it guys. Help us find victory on YouTube. Oh, and by the way, if you wanna to help to make sure that you thank Google for all the wonderful things they aren't doing for us, the best thing you can do is when you're buying this plane, follow the links that we put in there, in the description. And if you can't find the link because somehow Google has tried to shut us down in that regard, which they are currently doing, by the way, because we are breaking their policies, they say, then you can go to brianphillipsrc.com where you will be then redirected back to YouTube at some point after you've searched and found the plane you want by type or by brand, distributor, make, model, whatever that is, or by type. So this would be like a C plane, and this would also be a Tower Hobbies. So you'd be like Tower Hobbies, Horizon Hobby, or it'd be a C plane over here, okay? Or general aviation, okay? So that's how we do that so that you can find all the stuff that you wanted to see us do. And all these planes in the background, we've obviously done and lots more.
because there's literally another probably 1800 square feet of this house that's full of planes. And I'm not just talking about that closet that's full. I'm talking about downstairs is totally full. And we have ambitions to build a big building, a 60 by 80 building where we're going to have even more storage. So we love airplanes. We love you guys. And we're glad that you're here with us. Was I going somewhere with that? I feel like I was. No, she says no. All right. So can't wait to fly guys. Thanks for being here. Stay tuned. So much more from Bright Folds RC.